Welcome to part two of automating your onboarding using Power Automate. Now, if you haven't already seen my blog, we go through all the prerequisites and all the environments that you set up before you can actually run your Power Automate flow. In this video, we're gonna go through and show all of that happening so you can see the steps as they progress. So let's go and get started. So first up, I just want to take you to my blog site really here. This is part one, automate your onboarding with Power Automate. So go ahead and take a look at that. That's on movetomodern.uk. And this will take you through all the steps and prerequisites. Okay, so I'll give you all the scenarios that you might need to use. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do now is have a look at the Intune Admin Center. The reason for that is basically we just want to check our environment before we go through and do a run. So in groups here, you notice that I've got this graduates group. If I go into that group, I do have members from a previous run. But basically, I'm going to look at the dynamic membership rules because what I've got here is dynamic rule where it basically is saying user department is equal to graduates. Now, if you've read the blog, what you'll notice is when we create a new user, it should automatically dy dynamically add these users into our group. And the reason we want that is because we've assigned licenses to this group at the group level. So we've got um, EMS and we've got Office 365 E5 in there. So that's the reason for doing that. The EMS license basically is going to enable the end user so they can enroll their device once they're, you know, as part of their onboarding, they've been deployed a device, but that's beyond or after this process which we're showing here. And they're going to need the Office 365 license as well in order to access the, the environment, SharePoint, Outlook, etc. So what we need to do now is just check the environments that we're going to be using as all part of this onboarding process. So if you remember from the blog, I've got an employee onboarding site. So this has been set up in SharePoint. You can use a template which creates all this, these resources. So you get a checklist which where we can add items to it. There's a training site where end users can come and pick up videos and documents, etc. There's a how we work, meet the team, right? So information about the team, the person's. Uh, joining and documents okay so these might be important enrollment documents or getting started in their job so that's the SharePoint site like I say it's a template if we now look at forms we've created a form which effectively you're going to use HR are going to use and this is the starting point from which they can create the new user so that's the, the starting process we'll come back to that from a a uh, planner point of view, Microsoft Planner, what we've got here is all plan tasks and all the things that the HR team might need to work through. Um, we've got a technology field here and we're basically going to add some tasks in for the HR team and so they know what, what's in front of them, what's what they've been assigned to. Then we've got our power, power Automate actual flow, right? This is logged on from my admin user, but basically we're using Power Automate in order to create this flow and automate all these processes. You'll see how this is built out in the blog. So I won't go through all the detail here. What we're gonna do is actually run it, but have a look at that and you'll see all the differences in the different types of flow actions that you can take. From a database point of view, we need to capture all the information that we um, enter into our form. Um, we're just using a basic Excel document here, but this might be a database where you can link to that through Power Automate or some other way that you're capturing your information. So we're just using a basic way here to make things nice and simple. And lastly, we've got the Outlook account for the manager of the person or employee we're going to be onboarding. We need this because there's going to be tasks and information sent and also an approval to the manager as part of that flow. So this is the full environment that we're going to automate with. It's fully Microsoft stack, which is why we're using the licenses assigned to us. And now we're going to go through and actually see this running. So back to our Power Automate flow here. And this is where we're going to dynamically see things change. Now I can set this to test. Um, we're going to be in test mode here, but you, this should automatically pick up 
any submission for a new user from our form. So I hit the test here and it will be effectively, it'll ask me whether I'm manually or automatically test this. I'm gonna do it manually and it's waiting for an input. If I go to my form, this is my uh, HR person and basically I'm gonna start Helen Smith Helen Smith on the 19th of April and she's going to be in the graduates department. So if I submit that, that submission is gone. Now if I go back to my Power Automate flow, you should see things start happening. It's received a response, so it's got the response. It's going to go through this switch, which is going to determine the department. And on the back of that, it should update our database, right? So if I go to that database, it's now added Helen Smith in the graduates department. It's created the uh, added in the department lead. Um, and basically it's saying it's pending. It's also given us a UPN for that, that user. So if I go back to Power Automate, at this point what it's doing, it's setting a few variables and it whizzes through those pretty quickly. Um, and then it's going to wait for four minutes. And the reason for that is it needs to make sure that the details on the database are committed. And once it's done that, it will basically go through and list or extract the information that's pending. So any new users that haven't been completed, it's gonna pick them up. And we're gonna see that then progress to the next stage. Once our four minute delay has finished here, like I say, it's gonna pick up these pending rows and then it's gonna go through all these for each uh, pending record. So for every pending record it picks up, it's going to first off, it's going to uh, start and wait for an approval. So at this point, it's going to send an email to the assigned manager and we'll see that come through. And then it's going to go into another delay cycle again, because we want to make sure that we're going to delay our processing before the, the approval comes back from our manager. So the delay's finished, it's picked up our pending records and now it's processing this approval action. So we should see an email come through for the, the manager. If I log into Outlook for the assigned manager and we're going to Outlook here. So we have a new email and it's telling us there's a new starter and we can approve or reject this, uh, this action. So I'm gonna hit the approve and just put a comment in here. We'll submit that back to our approval flow and then we'll go back into Power Automate. Now we do need to delay, like I say, because it is waiting for that approval to come back. Once the approval has been received, that's when it's gonna go through a number of additional steps. So we're gonna see our user be created within Intune, a new user with their email address. We're gonna create a task in Microsoft Planner for the HR team, which we'll take a look at. And also it's gonna add an item into the SharePoint site, just basically as part of the welcoming of that new user. It will then go into another five minute delay, after which it's gonna send some verification emails, both to the manager and to the new user that's being enrolled. So when they do actually enroll their device, they'll have an email waiting for them, which will be a welcome to the team email. Okay, and it does that by creating an event for the end user. The final step that it will go through is it will complete our database and show that that flow uh, successfully uh, completed. So we'll wait for this to complete. Okay, so it's gone through the delay process. We've now created, it's given us a tick on all of these things. So it's created our user, like I say, and we've gone through to the complete. So that completes the flow. Uh, remember, this was an approval. If it had gone through a rejection, we would have seen um, something on the right-hand side here where it was been rejected and we would have seen a tick there. So let's go through and look at all the things that it's created within our environment. So we've gone back into the uh, manager's email account here and after the approval that we already process, I can see that there is an invite, a calendar invite, okay, which is basically given us a date for welcoming the, you know, meet the team first day. That's what's been set up. And it's not just been sent to the manager, Megan here. It's also been sent to the actual uh, user or employee that's gonna be onboarded, Helen Smith, that we in input. So I'm gonna just click that and say to yes. 
And following that, it also sent an email. So it sent Helen, the new employee, an email, basically giving them some guidance about information um, as, as they enroll on, into the company. So that was also CC'd into Helen, the manager. If I go into the um, SharePoint site, sorry, into the planner site, I can see this is where HR will pick up their actions. I can see that there is a please raise an IT equipment order for new starter Helen Smith. And there's some information in here that might relate to that particular task. So that's been assigned to the manager and they would need to process that. If I then go into the database, I can see that the actual new user has been given uh, an entry in here and it's set to complete. So that's a, a positive sign. And lastly, what I wanna do is go into Intune so I can see the user that's been added. So we've got Helen Smith here, which is our new user. If I look at the licenses, she's got the licenses that are necessary and I can see that she's also been added to the graduates group automatically. So the very final thing I want to do here is I'm going to simulate, I'm going to go into the new user or employee that's going to be joining our company and go into their email. So if I go into their email now, in order to do this, obviously this would be, um, you have the, the password sent to the end user and they'd need to maybe go through MFA and, and register with that before they can log in. But I'm just simulating this here. So I've logged into the new employee's email because actually if I go into, um, into the user's account, I can see as part of their overview that they're, and go into their details, uh, edit their properties. I can see that the um, all the information is there okay so the user was set up is part of the department in graduates it's got an email address there and that's the email that we were sending the information to okay so if I go back into her email I've got two entries here so I've got a uh, in the same way that the manager had I had uh, an invite Okay, a calendar invite to meet the team first day. I can hit that select yes on that. And I've also got a welcome email that you saw for the manager sent to the manager as well. And this is just some guidance for their first day or information for their role. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful. Please like and subscribe if you wanna see more content like this and go ahead and try it for yourself and see what you can automate in your environment. Thanks very much.